All right. The other uh, the other aspect or the other aspect that um, are key to the brain and the brain stem. What you see in this particular diagram is you see the the spinal cord moving its way in, and it's wrapped around by uh, the cerebellum. And so the spinal cord is down here, and the cerebellum cord. And the, the cerebellum is oftentimes re referred to as the mini, or the, um, I'm sorry, uh, is oftentimes referred to as the little brain, uh, cere cerebellum. And um, it's called the little brain partly because, and I'll show you another diagram here in a minute, but it, it actually uh, mimics the hemispheres of the brain, of the larger brain, if you will, the higher cortical areas. Um, it actually mimics it. So you have two hemispheres very similar to uh, the overall structure of the entire brain itself. And you can see them, you can essentially see them right here. Uh, and there are these protrusions and essentially, they have a lot to do, and they've been on display. If you've been watching the the Olympics, uh, they've been they are uh, primarily, in a lot of ways, in, uh, part of um, uh, nonverbal learning, which essentially is action-based learning, um, nonverbal learning. And so, when you see uh, Gabby Douglas, um, whoops. Uh, you see her on the balance beam. Um, some athletes sometimes refer to this as muscle memory, uh, but it's nonverbal learning. It's not. It's not mediated by uh, by actual uh, verbal input. I don't ask you something and then you pull out based on learning something that you know. Actually, you act it out, and that's part of what we see in athletics a fair amount. So um, it it modulates emotions and then it coordinates uh, it coordinates uh, voluntary movement uh, so emotions and then voluntary movement and the thing the thing that we learn the most about some of the um, uh, structures and how they operate is when something goes wrong and uh, one of the things that I have found uh, through my experience is uh, my father-in-law is actually a veterinarian, and he he had a um, uh, he had obviously a very soft heart for animals, and and he adopted a cat uh, who who had uh, something we refer to as cerebellar hyper hyperplasia hyper I gotta stop a minute to make sure that I spell this right. Hyperplasia, and it was it was a um, it was a disorder of the cerebellum. And poor Ricky, uh, and that was the name. He was pure white. Uh, he was uh, uh, he had very jerky movements, uh, and something that we refer to as intention tremors. Whenever he took on the task to intend certain movement, his tremors would get worse. And sometimes we see this. And people, as they grow old, and when they go to reach for something, and the tremors uh, come into play. And poor Ricky, when he intended to try to eat, he would bang his teeth against the the um, bowl, the dish that had his food in it. Unfortunately, um, and that was all part of this intention tremors. And that's really how critical the cerebellum is: is is that it creates this smoothness of movement. Uh, that we depend on in order to complete most tasks, even as I try to uh, write. And you'll see at times, because I am disconnected from my uh, pen point, uh, I'm watching on the screen as I'm writing, that my cerebellum is quickly trying to translate what I see through my eyes down onto the tablet on which I'm writing to create this video. So the cerebellum 
it plays a, a crucial role in most of our learning, but it all has most to do with nonverbal learning rather than verbal learning. If it was verbal learning, it would probably be coming from these big areas of the of the uh, brain itself. Now, let me let me show you the interior from a little bit different angle that might be uh, uh, fascinating for you to take a look at and see these um, in a three-dimensional, 360-degree angle. All right, this is uh, this is a little bit different point of view, but you you're able to see. We're looking at the interior brain, and, we're, and what, what's nice about this is I can actually rotate it, and you can take a look at the specific structures themselves and what we, we have already talked about in a fairly static kind of model. Here's the first one, and this is the thalamus, and so you can keep an eye on that as I rotate it, and what you see is the thalamus is on both sides. of The hypothalamus is just below it, and then you move up to these various bodies interior, but the thalamus is split in two and is uh, uh, underneath, runs underneath these structures to be one body itself. Now, we haven't talked about the hypothalamus yet, but we will. And then over on this side over here is part of the, the hippocampus, which is part of the memory system and limbic system, which we'll talk about in a minute. We already talked about the pons. It gives you a little bit of an idea of the, the size of the pons right here. And then we move farther down, and when we talked about medulla oblongata, what you see is the exterior, it lies along the spinal cord as it comes into the cranium. And then you go a little farther in, you see the pyramid uh, and how it lays out there um, on the interior. So the the medulla oblongata is right at this area. Now, if we rotate it a little bit more, you can actually see it from the backside. And this is just a ventricle, which is a fluid-filled space. But you see the pons, where it shows up on both sides. Then this pentacle, which we, we are not really paying much attention to, at least for the purposes of this class. There's the thalamus again, and then the the, the uh, fornix crua and the hypo, hippocampus. But look down here, we go to the uh, gray cell tubercle, and then you go a little farther out, outside, on just as part of the uh, spinal cord, the cune, cuneate uh, tu, tu, tubercle, and then finally the medulla oblongata, which runs completely along the outside of the spinal cord as it comes into the, the brain itself. So. And, and when you rotate this, you get a little bit different perspective of just how uh, these structures are situated interior to the brain. And like I said, we're looking now face on to the particular subject here. And you can see the, ex the larger uh, structures of the cortex beyond it. But then when you rotate it, now we're looking at the person's left side and then continuing to the back and then to the to the right side. So, or the left side, back and right side, my, my apologies. So it gives you an idea of what it actually looks like on the interior. Now, what I can do with this diagram is I can actually uh, look, add structures to it. So we've got that inner brain, um, the, the most interior, and then I add another, and these are ventricles. These are all fluid filled areas and we just talked about the cerebellum. Um, and when I rotate the, this again, you'll see the cerebellum in all of its glory, uh, the two hemispheres. That's why we refer to it as the little brain. And then uh, you can rotate it around, see again uh, various structures themselves with the, the hypothalamus and thalamus. Um, and then, of course, you move below to the hippocampus. Now, let's keep adding. We'll add another structure to it, and what you have here is the putamen, which is not in our. Uh, we, we're not getting into that detail. If you, when you get into physiological psychology, you'll be looking more in the kind of detail it shows in this uh, in this particular diagram. And these are the optic nerves. So this goes out to the to the person's eyes. So if I rotate it, it's kind of creepy, I suppose. But what you're seeing here is going out to each separate eye. And then you see the cerebellum and all the other structures that we already just talked about. So um, the, the last diagram I want to show you is something that we refer to as the sagittal 
or sagat uh, yeah the sagittal brain and and this is basically just a cross section so you actually see the spinal cord coming in there's the pons that we talked about already the temporal lobe which we'll talk about when we look at the higher structures and then the thalamus and beyond the optic nerve uh, the the uh, hypothalamus, hypothalamus, and then of course the cerebellum, and this gives you an idea of how it all uh, looks when uh, you're actually looking at the brain in the cranium itself. If you're interested and you'd like to take a look at this, uh, all you have to do is go to www.healthline.com/human-body-maps, and then slash brain and that will allow you to actually look at uh, this cross section of it when we add to the very final structure you see the entire brain in in its uh, as it sits in the person's uh, skull and all the accompanying nerves and so forth you can run your your um, um, uh, cursor over it and you can see the vagus nerve which goes down into the abdomen and the facial nerves and some of the other smaller nerves that are part of uh, our, um, our uh, operating system that's contained in our brain.